Hey, good morning. I want to come to you and give you some updates from FCA this year and what's going on in Sioux County, Northwest Iowa. And first of all, thank you for just being a part, whether that's praying, whether it's support financially, we appreciate it all. It's been phenomenal. And just give you some updates of what our theme is for the year. I'm going to give you a quick message, um, updates on the ministry side, and uh, send you out with a message too. So it's going to be good. But here's what the theme is for the year. Pursue is the FCA theme. And what that looks like is this. And it makes me think of my own life, my own moment of salvation or when Christ drew me to himself. You know, he took me out of the miry muck, set me on a rock and literally gave me a firm place to stand. And it's his goodness, his love that pursues us. And the theme this year is pursue. And I love this aspect because it says this. Once upon a time, I faced uncertainty in many areas of my life. And every day I pursued something solid to rely on. So prior to salvation, you know, um, we face uncertainties. We pursue something solid to rely on, but without Jesus, we never find it. It says this, until one day I recognized God pursues me. I am strengthened by my faith in others to live on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. So in that moment, when you realize Christ pursued you and he loved you regardless of the circumstances, the sin you were so easily entangled in, he rescued us, pulled us out of the monk, set us on a rock, and gave us that firm place to stand. And it says, And now I pursue Jesus and have found confidence, calling, and confirmation to live and serve on mission for Jesus in spite of uncertainty or changing circumstance. So even today, in the spite of unchanging circumstance in our nation, we still live on mission. We pursue Jesus because we know that he sets all things right. He makes all things straight. And every path pursued um, following him ends up to be a great path. And that's our vision for this area. Our vision is to see awakening, to see revival, to see youth turn back to him, to see Christian culture built up, which is amazingly done already in Sioux County and uh, just an amazing area to minister in. But that's our hope. And this pursue makes me think of the biblical story of Hosea. And Hosea was a prophet in um, Israel, Judah. And he was called to take a wife by the name of Gomer, who was, who was going to be unfaithful to him. So picture this. Prior to getting married to her, the Lord is like, she's going to cheat on you. She's going to leave you. And she's going to run after other lovers. She's going to have kids with other men. But in, in spite of all that, I want you to pursue her. I want you to love her. I want you to lead her. And she's going to go through the wilderness, and I'm going to speak to her there. But eventually, I want you to take her back, and I want you to love her. And that's what Christ does for us. Even in the midst of us pursuing everything else but him, he pursues us. And it's an amazing grace-filled story of, you know, Hosea's love uh, for a woman that was unfaithful. And it ultimately reflects his love for us. Even in the midst of our unfaithfulness, Christ pursues us. And I love that story because it, it shows my story. How I literally was wayward in my early 20s and how Christ pursued me, grabbed me back, and gave me that firm place to stand. So that's pursue for the year. Some updates from FCA. Here's what we got going on. We got a lot of new stuff going on, which is exciting. Uh, we got a new huddle going in Hall Christian, and this is going to be between the, the sixth through eighth grade class, and it's been awesome. We've been doing six week seg segments where I'll come in and we go through what's called the Discovery Bible Study DBS, and we talk about what's been going good, who needs prayer, and we go through a simple lesson with five questions. Then we do a fun game afterwards. We've brought donuts. And it's been incredible. Uh, there's probably been about 30 kids per week there. And they've all bought FCA Bibles. So they're all getting the Word, which the Word gives power to change life. So teaching kids to uh, get in the Word at a young age is absolutely amazing. Uh, just dropped off, what was it? Five, six cases to MOC, Alton, uh, the, the middle school over there. And Coach uh, Scott Starkweather leads that organization, does an amazing job with a program and uh, his his story came through FCA years, years back and he's has an amazing program over there but delivered Bibles and uh, brought some coaches Bibles over to a coach at West Sioux last week and it's been just great getting to know the coaches in the area. They're phenomenal, phenomenal leaders of men. And like Billy Graham said, he goes, a coach has the ability to affect more people in one year than most do in a lifetime. And our ministry is to the coach, to the coach, to the athlete. And a few other things here, George Little Rock kicked off uh, FCA Huddle this year, spoke over there here a few weeks ago, and that was great. So that's a new huddle kicking off this year. Western Christian kicked off a huddle this year. Coach Koima 
is facilitating the students are leading that and they get about a dozen kids that show up per week so that's a fresh new start uh dort uh, university kicked off a huddle this year as well and they have probably 15 to 20 uh students showing up and that's all athletes northwestern college i visited that college last week and uh me and Hogevane does an awesome job with that group, and we spoke to a group over there last week, and they're fanning the flame, keeping the huddle going over there. And a few other things too, Sioux Center, visited Sioux Center here a while back with uh, Grant Willits, but lots of good stuff going on in FCA. And excited, we have a banquet this week. We have a coaches uh, timeout date night, and that's gonna be Saturday night in Cherokee, and it's for coaches and their wives to have their marriage strengthened, a night out, they get food, they get a message from Mike Singletary, former Chicago Bear and his wife. The next night is our FCA banquet in Sioux Center, Iowa, which is exciting to right here in our hometown. And that's gonna be amazing. We have a great crowd lined up for that night. And from what I hear, there's gonna be quite a few former and current NFL players um, in the room. So it's gonna be an amazing night with uh, Mike Singletary and his wife also giving a message. So we are excited about that. So I wanna thank you guys again for support. If it's on your heart to give, to the ministry, uh, we would love that. Like uh, we are 100% donor, donor supported. So our ministry, we're uh, like a modern day missionary in America. And it's interesting because my heart has always been for our country and we need missionaries in every single aspect uh, of the world, every single place. But uh, the greatest mission field I believe right now is in America, in the schools and right here in home. And I believe that's where we're called to is to uh, start with our own home and lead to the schools, lead to people, and see revival all, all across the land. So if it's on your heart to give, uh, reach out. I'll attach a link, and uh, you can sure give and support the ministry. We do monthly donations. We do one-time donations, and we are super grateful. Everything is tax deductible, and that goes right to right to uh, um, our ministry to support for our funds, for the for our, our salary, uh, Bibles for the kids. We do donuts sometime. We do different things and events. So that's what the funds go to. So we're super grateful for anyone who gives. Now, let me leave you with this message too. Revelation 19, as we look forward in the days to come, there's going to come a day, no man knows when it's going to come, but Jesus is going to come back again. And that's exciting. He came once, he died on the cross, he set us free from our sin when we come to faith and receive that, but he's going to come again. And that's the exciting thing. And with sports, you know, there's a winner and there's a loser. So coaches, I love ministering to coaches because... When you realize there's a winner and you realize there's a loser, you know there's a battle and there's a game going on. And Revelation tells us about that. And it says this in Revelation 19, verse 11. It says, Then I saw heaven open, and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. So he's, he's righteous. He's fair. His eyes were like flames of fire and his head were many crowns. So think about his eyes, just flames of fire and his head, he had many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. So he's got a name that only he knows what it is. We don't know what it is. He wore a robe dipped in blood. So his robe is dipped in blood and the title was the word of God. So the title was the word of God and that's because this word is who he is. So if you ever want to know who the Lord is, you read his word and you figure out who he is really quickly. He's fair. He's righteous. He's loving. He's uh, full of mercy. He's full of justice. Like that is the God we serve. It says, uh, the armies of heaven dressed in the finest of pure white linen followed him on white horses. The white horses like the purity of Christ. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nation. So you see a sword behind me. That's the sword of David, they call it. But think about this. The sword is when he speaks, um, things are destroyed. Like he spoke this world into existence and he's going to speak when he comes back one day and he's going to wage war literally with his mouth. And it talks about that too. Like our words give life. They bring life or death, blessing or cursing. Like choose uh, wisely what you're going to say out of your mouth because our words have power too. It says he will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, the almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press. On his robe, at his thigh, was written this title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, shouting to the vultures, flying high in the sky, Come, gather together for a great banquet God has prepared. Come and eat flesh of flesh, generals and strong warriors of horses and their riders. 
and of all humanity, both free and slaves, small and great. So he welcomes all. That's the good news. And it says, Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and the army. Ain't that inter interesting? The beast and the kings of the world coming against and their armies gathered against the Lord, the one sitting on the white horse. And the beast was captured, the good news, and with him the false prophet who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast. It says, uh, Miracles that deceived all who accepted the mark of the beast and who worshipped his stature. Both the beast and his false prophet were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Their entire army was killed with the sharp sword that came from the mouth of the one riding on the white horse. And the vultures all gorged themselves on the dead bodies. Think about that real quick. And I love this analogy because it's, uh, you know, you never want to think about killing your enemy in sports um, or your, your opponent. I should say your enemy because um, it's awesome to get along with your opponents. But athletics show that like there's a winner and there's a loser. And in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. And it's the promise we can lean into uh, moving forward that we know. Uh, we're on the winning team. Once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are on the winning team. You fear no evil. You march forward in faith. And that's what we're excited about in the days to come. So we don't know when that day is going to come, um, but we know it is going to come. We know who's the winner of it all. So let me pray for you and bless you and send you out. And thank you for listening to this. So Father God, I thank you for every person who tuned in. I pray for every coach and athlete and, and uh, high school, middle school, teachers, you name it people inside school systems. We pray for the blessing of the Lord to come upon them and we thank you for them. Uh, we pray your grace upon them. We pray that their uh, teachings lead people right into the into the hands of you, Lord. And we just pray a blessing on the schools, on every single school in Northwest Iowa, in Sioux County, in the nation. And I thank you for each and every one of these. I pray for athletic teams. I pray that as they uh, compete, they model you and I glorify you in all I do. So we just pray blessing over each and every person. Thank you for uh, the givers. Uh, bless their businesses, bless their lives, bless their families, and rebuke the devourer for their name's sake. In the name of Jesus, for your name's sake, amen. Thanks, guys, and uh, thanks for tuning in.